start over. So we have James's uh, 2007 FJ Cruiser here. It's beautiful. It looks different from last I saw it a couple of years ago. So how long have the, have you had this car, uh, James? Uh, six years now. Six uh, 2017. Years. Oh, nice. Uh, this thing looks like one of those uh, RC cars with those giant tire on it. So what's the last thing you did on the on this FJ? Uh, last thing would be 40s, 40 inch tires. 40 inch. So that's the whole circumference of this tire. This is like up to my hip here. Or no, all the way to my belly button. How high, how high is that next to you? Let's see. Dude, that is crazy. Yeah. Dang. And then also the front suspension. Oh, you did an overhaul? You change it out? Yeah. Completely to... Uh fully built JD fabrication uh, front lower lower pivots and lower control arms and upper control arms uh, a, a steering assist rack coilovers okay. all sorts of stuff wait so which is the lower pivot the lower pivots are actually the uh, uh, cam alignment uh, oh is it tabs. this everything everything is welded in and reinforced and with all quarter inch steel plate. Oh, these. So this is the lower control arm. Yep. And what about this? This is the tie rod? That's or? the tie rod. Behind it is a 934 axle. Um, they're cut and re-welded into use like sand rail components. Oh, wow. And in the coilover system here. What's the brand of that coilover? It's a King Shock. Wow, it's uh, premium. It's a two and a half inch shock, diameter shock, and it has a uh, race resi. Race resi. <clears throat> this is the race resi? Yeah. I thought this was the flex capacitor. <laughs> oh, there's adjustment? Is this what this is? It allows you to add uh, nitrogen. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, look at that. Beautiful. Hey, so those are the... Uh, it's, at the end of the tie rods, are those are those called the spherical uh, bearings? Bearings. Yeah, or uh, like heim joints or uni bo pillow balls. Like yeah, Dang. So basically, nothing's factory here, huh? Even the upper control mm -hmm. arm. Like. Well, the, <clears throat> the, the spindle is factory. Oh, the spindle. Yeah, the, the spindle arm or this knuckle. is the spindle arm. Yes. This. Oh. The spindle arm is the arm that connects the upper and lower wow. control arm. And that's still stock. It's just well reinforced and welded in. I see. And then the brakes are upgraded to 13.3 uh, with Wellwoods. That's a six piston, huh? Yeah, six piston. Dang. Six piston. Uh, stopping power is... Yeah. Super fat, super big. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's upgraded here. Get a better look here of this King Shock. And then inside there, you can see uh, the headers there. Uh, it's got custom header too. Yeah. So the engine must be <clears throat> modified. All right. How about this bumper? Did you have this bumper before last time I saw uh, you? No, this is a different bumper. So oh, before wow. I had like a <clears throat> rally bumper. Yeah. And now it is a uh, push bumper style with uh, two inch uh, steel up front. And then uh, frame horns that are nice and gusseted. Oh, wait, what is the frame horn? So you can see that these are actual horns that protrude. Yeah. They protrude from the uh, frame and everything's reinforced with bigger steel plate but normally oh, people build this with tube like a down tube connected oh, to yeah, the plate. Oh yeah I've seen those yeah. <clears throat> so imagine how, how much stronger this is boxed in yeah uh, rather than just tube. I see it's got a nice angle too. There's a lot of projects that are ongoing. Um, there's like an engine cooler, transmission cooler. Right beneath yeah, the back of this yeah, bumper. Right oh, I it. see it. 
they're mounted, but I don't think they're hooked up yet, right? No, not lines yet. Uh, just I had time. This is like the small stuff. I I'd rather do myself, and then the yeah. stuff when I have to. Uh, when I don't have time, I just have a shop to take care of it. Yeah, that's the thing. No shame in the game. Yeah, sometimes it's just worth it mm -hmm. to get a shop to do it all for you. And so this lower pivot is everything. Uh, it's a reinforced bar, and then re reinforced plate plating and they have to cut off all the stock mounts mm. so it'll never be the same again <laughs> you can't then, go back the tie rod it has a big giant bracket right there and that's attached to the oh, yeah, steering bracket rack. here it's attached to the steering rack as well as uh, the steering assist wow so the steering assist is that normal to have that when you do all the suspension work it's just like upgrade because you don't have to have that right right you don't have to have it uh it's just an additional uh, some people decide to go with a bigger rack mm -hmm. uh here you can uh, keep the stock rack but uh, modify and install a second uh assist rack oh, wow. to kind of uh, deflect side loads i see and you got a strap there to keep the arm from going too far out is that what that's called yep, what's that's that a, that's a good old limit strap uh, keeps it from extending uh, past its uh, using the shock to to stop the suspension cycle because it has like super long travel huh this uh yeah I mean it's not super long uh, any IFS owner uh, knows that you l limit at some point yeah whether it's the arms the uh, CV joints or anything. Yeah. Everything's limited. Um, but I you see. just try to get the most reliable I see. setup that you can. By the way, if you didn't know, I know nothing about these off-road components, so that's why I'm asking so many questions. <laughs> so now that we're looking at this tire and wheel combo, what are these uh, set of wheels? Uh, Titan 7 forged uh, TA k ones oh, they okay. are see closer they are T 20 pounds K1. for a 17 wow. by by eight and a half wheel dang and you can nicely see the six piston brake behind all this the caliper and that 13 and 13.6 rotor uh, 13.3 13.3 dang that's pretty big because the stock ones are like what 12 something maybe yeah probably 12 yeah. 5 or 12.2 yeah that's the one on like all the toyota trucks now like uh, tacoma forerunners the yeah. four piston uh these are actually a uh forerunner uh rotors from the newer sport models and the oh. trd they all run a bigger rotor, but the the caliper is pretty similar. Nice. And then uh, using EVC rotors. Dang. Yeah. You got the 40 by 13 and a half, mm -hmm. 17 tire. Yep. How much, I mean, how much weight do you think this is with the tire on? Uh, the wheel is 20, the tire is like, like 50, 60 like, or even more. Yeah, no, no, it's like 90, 90. Oh, shoot eight pounds i think so probably the whole thing is uh, like 118 pounds yeah that. when i used to run a tire shop i would hate to do any trucks because any of the tires just super ex super excessively heavy yeah for my little body to lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah most shops won't install it uh, unfortunately you have to go to a specific off-road like shop specialty shop yeah or the one big brand uh, uh well, you get a sponsor. I don't know. <laughs> uh, discount Tire. They're probably the only ones that install them regularly. You can't go to Costco. Can't go to Costco. Can't They're gonna go. go hey, to... your tire's not factory size. Can't go to Firestone. Can't go to. Yeah. Yeah. You just won't uh, handle it. Well, I also noticed this fender here. It's wider than usual. It's like. Yep. That's maybe a... a few inches wider than stock. Yep. Plus four inch. Uh trailer products fender trailer products that's the brand yeah and the rear it's actually a different brand <laughs> oh um, it looks so factory though it looks good yeah it's good flow right it's not, not half bad yeah but, uh, and the rear is a 
uh, McNeil Racing Fiberglass. McNeil Racing Fiberglass. I know, cause I was like, man, I wish I had wide fenders on my my car over there. Yeah. <laughs> but I we have the same style yes. doors that open, so door. I'm like, how does it clear this? Cause on mine, it feels like it would hit this back area, but this right. works, I guess Let's somehow. Let's take a look here. And it oh, clears. it's different the way it opens. Yeah, it's it clears. It yeah, nice. it clears. Oh. And James, I remember years ago you had this painted right down in uh, TJ or something. <laughs> so all, all the kit is mounted and painted. And, uh, the kit. TJ Tijuana. <clears throat> the kit uh, was mounted and the whole car was painted, repainted. Oh. Uh, I can't say it was worth it any better uh still holding up yeah the initial price is cheaper but paint is fading and oh um, okay the risk of going down to mexico sometimes isn't worth it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and i think you got the roof painted white too right yes yeah, so uh you see some of the details here i mean it's not the greatest but it's not the worst i mean yeah. for the price how much did you pay for that job um, at that time like a thousand bucks <laughs> oh, yeah and paint jobs these days are super expensive it's yeah. like a thousand bucks just to do a bumper yeah i obviously the price is what it is yeah so is this molded on there or how did they get this body panel on there or is uh, it tabs inside originally the i again this is why you don't go to mexico like yeah i asked them to like have have it uh mounted like screwed in and mounted oh, okay. and the whole thing bolted in but they didn't bolt it in down here <laughs> um but i don't know it's okay it gives the character yeah it flexes a little bit uh oh seems like your tire might have so, hit that huh no actually no. uh i i got hit in downtown oh uh, a car like rammed it and broke <laughs> all the fiberglass so thank you downtown and the How Prius dare driver they? Yeah. Wait, what downtown is this? <laughs> downtown LA, the previous pre, uh, the Prius driver down on. Uh, I knew it. it. Had to be uh, a Prius driver. Beverly or one of those those neighborhoods. Thank yeah. you, Prius driver. <laughs> Prius driver. Wow, and the clearance is good all around, huh? Uh, yeah, it's not great. The off roading, it, it's perfectly fine. The the suspension cycle is nice and clear, but then like you get go down to the streets, like when you drive on streets, it <laughs> likes to like go low and slow. It yeah, starts yeah. rubbing everywhere. Oh, wow. So the back part of the suspension, you can't really see anything here, but is there anything that's non-factory? Uh, I mean, you have the uh, the coilover suspension, mm -hmm. but also, I'm sorry, not coilovers, the, the shocks. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also king shocks, but then you also have a, a skid protection. Yeah, I see I, the, this plate here. Skid protection, but along the... Uh, the lower uh uh mounting point for the uh, oh, yeah. shock itself there are like uh giant giant sliders that attach to the bottom of it so Let's take a look from the back yeah see if you can and just imagine carrying this 130 pound 20 pound spare in the back yeah th <laughs> there's ways to do it you know <laughs> Oh, the, the plate goes all the way to here, so you won't scrape your bumper. Yeah, I mean, it's been scraped already, <clears throat> but uh, it just helps us slide along if you ever hit a yeah. like a ledge or something. So from the back, I mean, you can see that there, uh, there's a silverish uh, uh, washer. And that's like another part of the uh, sliding component. Like oh, you yeah. can bolt it in. It won't snag the, won't the, the hex. Yeah, it won't snag the bolt. It'll just slide. Dang. And that that bracket's beefy. It's meant to protect the bottom of the sh the shock uh, mount mount. Oh, that. And then uh, pretty much stock. Uh, I'm gonna wait to other than like brake pads and um, brake rotors. I'm just waiting to upgrade the axle so that hmm. it needs some time. I mean, there's springs like upgraded springs. They're custom. Uh, coil spring specialty springs mm -hmm. and those are uh updated to a uh, half an inch taller and um uh taller on the uh driver's side 
it like compensates for lean. Okay, let me put this on pause for a second. Wait, so with the 40 inch tire and before that you had the 37, did you have to do anything to the, like this uh, differential or the transmission? Yes, so uh, as long as you keep the rear axle uh, stock gearing, um, that's probably the strongest they'll ever be. Oh, wow. Everybody re-gears their uh, differential or the axle yeah. to uh, a little bit, um, what is that, t taller or shorter ratio so yeah, they yeah. can accelerate. But then you start snapping teeth off and then it, uh, so you, you create more problems. But right now um, it's so it's running on the stock axle. It's running good. Oh, stock. I, I, I like romped on it earlier and it's been holding up. Oh, dang. Yeah. The, so transmission and the differential is all stock. The axles too. Uh, transmission's upgraded. Oh, the transmission's <clears throat> upgraded. Yeah. That's why you got the cooler in there. Yeah, it's got a uh, a Tundra uh, uh, torque converter oh. and upgraded uh, uh, with a upgraded uh, torque uh, valve. Yeah. Oh, okay. Transmission valve. I mean, if somebody were to hop into a like a OEM FJ factory, I mean, and versus this with their eyes closed, just getting in the car, would they notice the difference when it drives? Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, let's go to the engine compartment. Yeah, let's pop that engine. That's the gym. So, along with the upgrade transmission, it's got, now got the Magnuson. Uh, Eaton M90 supercharger. So, uh, supercharged power. It, it just picks up faster, but now with the upgraded uh, valve body on the transmission, it accelerates more crisp. Like the upshifts are quicker, and so someone will notice. <laughs> uh, but it takes time, it's all a system. Because now it's heavier. So, yeah, now it's heavier. It, it does need the extra power too power it needs the re-gear uh or at least the replacement of axle oh i see um got the vents on the hood too yeah, yeah. this looks good and i'm sure it helps breathe out the hot air yep. well so how many psi does this supercharger uh, produce well it should run about like eight psi now like stock is like six psi I see. Um, it's a smaller pulley uh, there's a 2.7 pulley uh, with uh, upgraded coil packs and um, just some of the little secret bits inside uh, has a bigger cooling capacity. These are uh, air to water coolers. Oh, okay, okay, nice. And the ECU, the do you have to upgrade that too? Is there like a plug and play? Uh, yeah, there's a plug and play. Uh, oh. There's a plug and play, but it's also. Uh, upgradable after after the fact like you can order from URD yeah uh under pressure underdog racing underdog racing is that all california legal for smog uh nah it's <laughs> on the side of not not legal but so right now if you have to make it legal the supercharger is legal but the computer you need to you need to run a uh toyota TRD tune or oh, okay. install their um, the Magnuson uh, approved approved uh, EC ECU a piggyback ECU which is a fully dog tuner yeah and that will cost maybe like two three grand just for that uh, no it's I think it's like a seven hundred dollar option but oh, okay. um, you, you have less option with tuning it after that I believe it's locked in because you know they want their emissions yeah. yeah. Got a nice little band-aid here to keep the fender. <laughs> of course, you need zip ties. Anything else you want to mention here in this engine? Uh, I mean, it all has lightweight pulleys in there. Um, they're all aluminum, along with the upgraded uh, Howe power steering pump. So this this part was pretty cool. I, I remember I did it before a trip. Like, uh, I didn't do the, this power steering pump yet, but I did a power steering cooler. Yeah. So I like built this uh, huge old like uh, one quart power steering uh, yeah. reservoir, 
and then it routes down to a, wow. a Durali cooler down there, straight down there. And you can see all the fins. So yeah. it gets oh, direct okay. air. Wait, so it cools down the power steering? Too. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't know they make cooler for the power steering. Because yeah. I guess it does have fluid, right? You got to yeah. cool it down. Power steering normally has a, a metal loop to cool. Here now it's actual physical uh, heat sink. Nice. How about uh, exhaust on this? Uh, exhaust? This you got the headers, right? You said? Yeah, so it has the uh, aftermarket headers. They're like Doug Thorley or... Uh, kind of see it? Yeah, this one's specifically a JBA headers, and JBA. they're, they're sh short, short tube headers, that, and they still have the uh, stock cat attached to them. Ooh, nice. Just so for smog purposes, you just yeah. see always pass. Uh, and then it's routed down to a, uh, you can see underneath, there's no skid plate right now. It's routed down to an AFE uh, intermediate or Y pipe. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's got it's a little a nice badge piece. on there. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, that's routed out to like a turn down exit ex exhaust. It's also AFE as well. I just chopped it up and AFE. it turns down. Oh, there you go. That's Pretty cool. You just fit underneath, huh? You just like work under the car. Yeah. <laughs> you can do a lot of cool things. You don't even have to lift it to work on it. <laughs> How many miles do you have on it now? Uh, 208,000 with a rebuilt. Uh, Rebuilt top end, like refreshing, like uh, head and everything. Uh, about twenty thousand miles ago. Oh, did it have a blown head gasket? Is that why you did it, or just no. did it just to just make sure? The, just just to make sure that uh, power is reliable. I don't have a, a head gasket leak in another twenty thousand miles and boost all day that you want. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear the wine. I want to hear it too. I know. Yeah, look at the <laughs> James, we're gonna ask you to start that up and hear the huh? beautiful sound of the supercharger. <laughs> Sorry, George. It it's all right. So, what's up, Max? Hey, Max. Go bite him. You can bite me, bite. but it will cost you <laughs> your life. Supercharger engages at like about 1800, 2000. Oh, damn. Yeah. Um, but now with the big tires, all the gearing's all off. Like you yeah. have to put it be in like second gear, or third gear to like fully accelerate. Sometimes. Right on, yeah. yeah. All right. Ready? Let's, yeah, let's hear it. It's not nothing special. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's pretty much stock. Nothing special. <laughs> George wants to do that on his uh, Tacoma now. Of course, you want to warm it up before you uh, rev it. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what warms it up. Wait, how much power do you think this is making? Uh, I, I've dynoed it, uh, so I have the sheets and everything. Uh, uh, we did a, a dyno jet that was attached to the hubs, and it got 295 uh, horsepower, I think, real one torque so is, he know. said 295 horsepower and 301 yeah torque torque yeah so it's just at the edge yeah well but you know this isn't butt numbers so. yeah yeah <laughs> so i mean that's to the crank right they, that's how they test it or is that to the wheels to the wheels to the wheels yeah, oh yeah. wow measure at the hubs. so the crank's probably higher than like yeah crank horsepower uh will be measured like 20% more 20% so, so about 350 360 maybe yeah so it's wow. closer yeah what's the mpg on it now with the big tire supercharger uh negative <laughs> <laughs> negative <laughs> mpg don't ask me <laughs> right. uh but uh on average you could get mixed driving of like 10 to 12 miles per gallon 10 to 12 miles per gallon yep. how big is your tank how big is the tank? Yeah. Um, 19, 19 and a half. Oh, okay. It's got the bucket seats. 
Wow, this is race inspired too. If you didn't know, my friend James here, he's also into cool sports car, so. Yeah. Wow. Ricaro's set of front seats. This guy had his guard here. This little uh, yeah, I'm not gonna animal back, here. Because it's just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Cool mounts here for phones and iPads and oh, I think this is sponsored by uh, <laughs> East Fork Supply. East Fork Supply Co. Hit them up. Hit them up for uh, services. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, some cool small stuff is like building all the brackets to get the feet, the seats to work and wires hanging out. But um, definitely. Um, very small things like the boost gauge. Um, yeah, the boost. You know, after a while, nothing's stock, right? <laughs> Do an oil change. Stock! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Take the stock right in? Or? Uh, you can turn it off, I think. We've seen enough of this beautiful truck here. And do you have any immediate plan for this thing? Uh, probably just have the rear end done now. Uh, maybe the full cage. Uh, um, it'll be a full full cage in yeah, there. Full uh, rated cage for I don't know sa safety mostly. Safety. Not necessarily competition, but safety. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, if I do a cage, then the whole rear sh rear suspension will get done with wow. uh, shocks and bypasses. Um, yeah, it's just another step. <laughs> wow. And you had roof rack before, and now it's just bare. Yeah, uh, you know, contrary to proper belief, like, not everybody needs a roof rack. Yeah. Uh, everybody and their mom has a roof rack. I don't know why. Sometimes they're not carrying anything. Uh, no, I don't think roof racks really look cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to kill one or two miles per gallon with that roof rack when you have no use for it. <laughs> All right. How's it going? <laughs> All right. Oh, look at that little sticker. Star Bears. What's the Star Bear sticker about? Uh, it's about a love story. One, it's very tragic. Uh, <laughs> you should look for it on the internet. Uh, it's there. <laughs> All right. So that concludes the walk around of uh, Mr. James 2007 FJ Cruiser. The mall runner. Yeah, the mall runner. Let's see, Thanks, see here. All right. Thanks for watching and... Feel free to uh, ask any questions. I will try to answer it as good as possible. And I'll contact this man here. <laughs> All right. Boom.